No, you are not seeing things or hearing things. Welcome to a bonus upload today <laughs> on the Save Money and More with Jan channel. How are you doing today? During this month of February, may surprise you every now and again with an additional video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's really important to keep sure and to make sure that you are still subscribed to this channel and that you receive all the necessary notifications. Want to jump right into it today? You know, a lot of people feel that meal planning or menu planning is maybe maybe not that important. I kind of disagree with that, but I do believe that there is a misunderstanding about uh, meal planning. For example, now some people do this on purpose and they love it and it works for them. That's totally cool. For example, they will write a list ahead of time. Monday, I will eat this. Tuesday, we will have that. I don't necessarily do that. I like to have the components everything that I need to put a meal together and then I could put together a meal. So for me, that's what works for me. But if that other style works for you and your family, Hey, I say, go for it. I think it's way better than being disorganized and could care less and then end up making that phone call or driving over somewhere and spending a ton of money that some people just don't have. Now, if you do have that money and you got room to spare and all your needs are met and more and then you're saving and all that good stuff, investing, whatever. Hey, I take my imaginary hat off to you. I'm not talking about folks like that. I'm talking about everyday folks that are just trying to make ends meet and get a little more than that. You know what I'm saying? There you go. And by the way, thanks again for being here. If you've not subscribed to the channel yet, please take a moment to do so now. But don't forget to slam down the notification bell. That's really, really important. All right. So let's get on with the list. Eight simple ways to make meal planning easy. All right, this is important. Number one, invest or repurpose in some food savers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, they don't have to be fancy. And you could pick up some really cool food savers at the dollar, dollar type store. Or uh, just if you can't do that at the moment, utilize some of the containers that you have from other foods. Make sure the food grade, clean them out. To, you know, just deal with them the best way you can possible, but have some good containers for your food that you intend to save and that you intend to prep. Okay. Now, I don't know about you, but I am not the type of person that has a ton of energy after, let's say, 5.30, 6.30 p.m., and I'm just like drained. I'm just not into it. I'm a morning person. All right. I could conquer the world in the morning, but in the evening, eh, doesn't work out for me. That's why it's not a bad idea whenever you have an opportunity to do some meal prepping. What do I mean by that? Have your preps ready. Clean up your vegetables, cut them up, slice, dice, chop, wrap them well, put them away properly in the crisper that you plan to use during that week for meals. That saves a lot of headache. I'm telling you, one of the turnoffs from some people is they don't want to do it slicing, dicing, and chopping at the end of a busy workday. Now, for some people, they like doing that at the end of a workday. What is your style? Only you can answer that. So have your preps ready. Take you know a little time, maybe on a weekend, whenever your weekend may be, or some downtime. Okay. Turn. Okay. Uh, number two. Turn leftovers into do-overs. I don't like the word leftovers. To me, it doesn't bother me personally. But here's what it bothers me, that it bothers other people. The term leftover seems to trouble some people. So therefore, so I'll switch the word around. Instead of saying leftovers, call them do-overs. And definitely take whatever you had from the main meal, turn it into a completely different dish. Your family wouldn't even realize that, for example, let's say you have a roast turkey and then all of a sudden, a couple of days later, you shred it up, you put some barbecue sauce, get a couple of simple rolls, toast them up, have that with a, a side dish of vegetable, potato or salad. You are good to go. You are done. Not a lot of brain power. And you're working with your original meal. I'm just saying they won't notice the difference. <laughs> Meatloaf. If you like meatloaf, then you are in good luck. What do I mean by that? Well, a meatloaf can mean different things to different people. Start off by making a few, like let's say two or three smaller meatloafs. One would be the original meatloaf. You do whatever you do that first night. The other one you could cut up into slices and maybe 
on, let's say, a tiring night, put those slices in the oven from the freezer and melt some cheese on top. It's kind of sort of like a cheeseburger. And the other meatloaf, you can cut them up or like make them into... Um, what you gonna call it? Those those ground grinded up things. Oh, I can't think of the moment. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Those crumbles. <laughs> Make crumbles out of it and put it in your frying pan or skillet. Put a little bit of tomato sauce and turn it into a sloppy joe, right? Then and, and there, or whatever you like to do with it, or chili. So you could do all that by just making a couple of little meatloafs at the beginning time. But you'll have that ready and available for you, that protein. And you could do it with tur ground turkey or with beef or whatever that you enjoy. I'm just saying hard-boiled eggs. What? What's so special about hard-boiled eggs? Well, they're not special, but they're convenient. They are a cheap, easy, readily available protein. Sometimes we get a protein dip in the middle of the day. People think they're looking for cake and candy. Not really. Sometimes people are actually looking to grab some protein at 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Hey, you can't go wrong with that. Grab an already done up hard boiled egg from the fridge, add a little salt and pepper to it, and you are good to go until dinner time. And I'm telling you, even these days, it's still on the cheap side to do just that. So make a few hard boiled eggs at the beginning of the week. Have them readily available. Frozen pizza. Listen, National Pizza Day is coming up. All right. Uh, let me see. Today is, what is today? Today's the 8th. Tomorrow is National Pizza Day. Ha <laughs> ha, February 9th. So if you can't afford fancy schmancy outside pizza, those toaster pizzas are really, really good in the uh, frozen section. Celebrate National Pizza Day with one of those frozen pizzas or just make one from yourself. There are so many wonderful videos out there where you can make a pizza dough from scratch, not even using yeast. So if you don't want to deal with the yeast and the rising and the this and the that, go for, for the type that uh, requires baking powder. You'll see there are a lot of recipes for that. Maybe I should find one of them and hook it up in a description below since we are so close to National Pizza Day. Yeah, I guess I'll do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see. Number four. Okay, that was five. I'm sorry. Five was uh, the frozen pizza. Number six. There is nothing wrong with having cereal for dinner, not just in the summertime either. In the wintertime, you could do a hot cereal version, okay, on a cold night. Sometimes just a hearty bowl of hot cereal with some fruit or maybe a salad on the side or some yogurt. You could call that dinner a yogurt parfait, hot cereal. Let's say like if you enjoy hot oatmeal or cream of wheat. And as your dessert, make yourself a yogurt parfait with with uh, fresh strawberries, you know, uh, as your parfait with your Greek yogurt. Add a little bit of vanilla extract for some flavor and a pinch of Splenda or a teensy weensy bit of sugar or cinnamon. Mm -mm -mm. Sounds good to me. And it's easy and it's cheap. Meal planning does not have to be so complicated. I think people overtly complicate things. But what is key is to have the components for the meal planning. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Um, make an easy peasy when you have a chance, a baked tray of macaroni type of meal if you enjoy pasta. It could either be macaroni and cheese, it could be a big ziti, or if you like lasagna, you know, those pre made noodles, whatever. You could inject vegetables or slash ricotta cheese and mozzarella cheese shredded and some um, tomato sauce of your choice, whatever. Have that for those nights where you are just simply so tired. And at least you know what's in your frozen pasta dish, not like a science lab that you're looking at. So you could easily make that up. It's just a matter of assembly. Those are what I call assembly meals. But to have them ready and just pop from the freezer directly into your oven is a great thing. I am just saying. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Make a vegetable stock with leftover veggie scraps. You know, while you're meal prepping and slicing and dicing, you know, like the leaves from celery, tops of carrots, uh, scraps from onions. You know where I'm going with this. Don't just throw them away. While you're doing your prepping time, put on a, in your slow cooker. You could put those things in your slow cooker and you could season it up, add some water, and you could let the day go by and make your own vegetable stock on the cheap. And best of all, nothing goes to waste. Well, I hope you didn't mind, but it came in by surprise today, but that's what's going to happen uh, 
within the month of February, you're going to have a few surprise uploads when you least expect it. That's why it's imperative that you click on the not notification bell when you subscribe. Have an amazing day and thank you for being here. I really do appreciate everybody's time.